since I already get the feel that they'll be groaning about this one because it's not easily organized in a fashion that you don't have to th that you can just avoid thinking I thought I'd make a video to show you at least one of them maybe two so the idea is that you have to understand that a linear function has a purpose it's not just about y equals mx plus b it's nice if you know that but it's meaningless outside of a context of just that structure if you don't understand the main idea of why you would bother doing it in the first place so if I have this form, or whatever form, there's two parts. There's the slope, which represents change. That's how the line should be going up or down. If it's decreasing, it's negative. If it's increasing, it's positive. The other side of it is the y-intercept. That's where you start out. So it talks about where you're linking, like where the point that you start. Or in some of these problems, they actually give you the end instead of the beginning, which might uh, mess with your head a little bit, but it shouldn't. It's just the idea that you have to have some reference point when you draw a line, like, oh, it's got a slope of 7. Okay, there's infinite number of slope of 7 graphs that you can have, you know, in the universe. So you have to have it marked somewhere. So the intercept is the key point of where you're going to go. So this question says, Carl filled up the tank of a truck with 400 liters of fuel and set out to deliver a shipment of bananas to Alaska. The truck consumed 0.8 liters of fuel for each kilometer driven. So what they want me to do is figure out, well, how does this all relate into this picture here? Well, first off, it says he filled it up with 400 liters of fuel and set out to deliver a shipment of bananas. So in the very beginning, his starting point, so my plus B, is 400 liters. So I'm going to take my starting point and go up to 400 liters. Now, it says that he consumed 0.8 liters of fuel for every kilogram. So... Or kilometer, not kilogram. Um... So, 0.8 liters per kilometer. I don't even need the IT. I don't know why I put that there. Um, so, really, what we're looking at is, what can I do? Because I mean, 0.8 is going to be a really difficult cell on this one. But it seems to go up by groups of 40. So, you're going to have to factor that in. It's going up, down, technically, uh, when I'm doing this, but I mean, the scale goes up by 40 every time. Well, if you think about it, well, okay, so 0.8, let me think of the numbers for 8. So 8, 16, I'm doing the multiples. 8, 16, I've got 24, I've got 32, I've got 40. Hmm. That might be something I can use. So I know that 8 times 5 is 40. So what's 0.8 times 5? If I can figure that out, it might give me a way that I could do this distance thing and actually make it matter. So 0.8 times 5 is 4. So I go 4 liters for every 5 kilometers travel. Now, if that's something I can use, this is liters. I'm going to put a little L there so it doesn't look like 41. Um, still, I'm not really where I can work anything, but if I use my brain for a second and say, okay, well, these are going up by 40. Well, 4 times 10 is 40. So really, and then if I do times 10 down here, for any 50 kilometers I drive, it takes 40 liters of gas. Now I can, that's my slope, really. So basically, instead of narrowing the slope down, usually you have to do the situation where you reduce the slope. You'll, you'll have 3 over 6, and it has to become 1 half. In this case, they're asking you to do the opposite, because math doesn't always work one way. It works lots of ways. You just have to follow certain rules to make it work, and this is one of them. So 40 liters for every 50. So I'm going to go down, if I can get my thing to work here. I'm starting here, so if I go down, there's 40, but I need to make sure that that's going 50 kilometers. Down here, 100 kilometers, 50 kilometers, perfect, right there. And there it is. This shows me when I'm going to run out of gas. At, 50, at 500 kilometers, he has zero liters of fuel left. 
And I know you're like, well, what about gallons of fuel? Well, in other parts of the world, Canada, for instance, and most of Europe, um, you're dealing with liters and instead of gallons because it's a more functional and easy to use setup. We just can't use metric because it's too hard to change once you've started using something else for so long. All the signs would have to change and that costs money. Um, so this one's just a little bit more like it. So a battery with 20% of its capacity full is connected to a charger. So right now, starting off, not ending, starting off, it's 20%. And this y-axis is labeled percent capacity. So I'm going to go and take this. Now, if it had said it ended with 20% capacity, I would take this and do something else with it over here. And it just depends. You'll have to pay attention to whether it's in the beginning of the situation or at the end of the situation. That's what matters. Uh, now, for every minute that passes, an additional 5% capacity is charged. This one's actually much easier than the last one because you don't have to do a lot of work. Here's a minute, and it's saying that every a minute, 5% is charged. So I'm just going to go over to one minute, go up 5%, and there you go. So it tells you, you know, if you f if assuming it's linear, which means it follows a, a line and it has the same slope. That's the big deal about linear. The slope is the same. The amount that it goes up or down all the time is, ex you know, it's equal. Each minute will go up the same in this case. So that's the line. So if I need to know, well, what's it going to be in eight minutes I've got to leave? Well, you'll have 60% battery life, so that's not bad. I mean, it's not going to get you anywhere long. You might want to bring your car charger, but it'll get you through a very light data portion of your day. And that's it. That's what this one's asking you to do, graphing linear functions word problems. You have to think about it a little bit, but that's a good thing. That's what you're supposed to be doing. It's not about easy victories, because that won't get you a cool job later on. You have to push for the hard victories to uh, make it worth it.